morning folks. How are we all doing? Everyone okay? It's another Monday and I've actually got Ross back to school today, only for a day, but it's a way back, so small steps. But today, most importantly, most of you will all be back in school today. And it's a lovely day, how exciting is that? I'm going on a wee journey today. Much probably like the one Jesus did over the hills and all on foot. Anyway, I'll be back, tune back in with you later. Just wanted to say good morning. Take care and I'll speak to you later on. How did you get on with those riddles then? They were a bit of a challenge some of them weren't they? Jesus was challenged to do something that he was going to find really really hard too. So on that note we're moving on to our next game. Are you brave enough? It's going to be a challenge and only the very very brave will do them all. Just what it was like for Jesus. What was coming to him was a real challenge, but he dared to do it. We're getting well through Lent now. How many of you have given up something during Lent? Maybe some of you have decided to do something different every day during Lent, something kind for somebody, which would be fantastic. I'm trying to do that, but I've also given up something that I've had far too much of during lockdown, because it's been a bit of a comfort to me, sweeties and chocolate bars. So I'm giving them up to Lent except I think it's going to backfire because I got quite a lot of chocolate for Mother's Day and then we got chocolates for our anniversary. So I'm storing all these up until Easter and then we'll have chocolate at Easter as well. So it's, it maybe won't work because I'm going to have so much chocolate to eat at Easter. Or maybe I can do the right thing and give some of that away. Just let it all go. Do you think I'll be strong enough to do it? I hope so. So, for those of you that have given something up for Lent, how easy are you finding it? I'm finding it a bit tricky, I have to say. Because um, sitting here in front of the laptop hour after hour really makes me crave having some chocolate or sweeties. So, I'm having to be really strong. And I'm hoping that I'll let go of it forever. And really, in the grand scheme of things, giving up a bit of chocolate and sweeties isn't much to give up, is it? But the disciples of Jesus, they did give up everything to follow him and they to maybe give up a few of the ideas they had of who Jesus was and what he was here for. They thought Jesus was going to be here forever and leading some great army and taking over as king of the world, basically. Because he was king of the world, but not in the way they were expecting, was it? So they had to work really hard and let go of some thoughts they thought had on Jesus and their idea of Jesus altogether. And today, that's really what we're all about. 
Right folks, we're going to play a game called Load and Let Go. So you just need a selection of awkward items. You could do it with books, boxes. We're going to do it with pillows and cushions to keep it safe. So you should maybe do that. You have 60 seconds to load, get loaded up with as many things as you can carry safely. Okay, as many things as you can, go, that you can carry safely. Okay, can you still move, Ross? Okay, now I want you to shake Katie's hand. Oh, oh, now try and wave. Give Katie a hug. Nice one. Okay, raise your hands in the air. Ah. You're going to have to let go of some stuff to do all that, aren't you? The only way you can make this possible is to let go of something that we're holding on to. When Ross was demonstrating, he was seeing what he could hold on to without having to let go to do something. But in the end, he had to let it all go, didn't he? And that was just like Jesus' disciples. They all have some idea of what they think Jesus is. Everybody had some idea of who they thought Jesus was. Because we know Jesus' story, don't we? But the disciples thought they had this great leader and he was going to be here forever to lead them and to bring people to God. But actually, he was just getting them ready, planting seeds for them so that the disciples could go on and keep bringing people to God. Jesus wasn't going to be around forever, was he? And we know that now. So the disciples had a lot of ideas they had to let go of. And today's story is just one of those times when Jesus was trying to get it across to them that he wasn't going to be here forever and that wasn't the way it was going to be. Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. It's a glorious day. We've had a couple of really cracking days, haven't we? Just nipped out, try and get a little bit of fresh air before the sun goes down. Sat inside all day like a lot of you will have done at school this week, looking out at these beautiful blue skies. So I've even taken a bit of filming outside, but you'll see that shortly. Anyway, I'm up one of my favourite places again. But if you look behind me, you'll see the reason why. Just had my fresh eggs delivered. Look at that. How fabulous is that? Fresh from the farm. Very fresh by the looks of some of the feathers and goodness knows what else is still stuck on these. And they're all, look at them. You can tell they're fresh. All the different shapes and sizes. Long ones, small ones, pretty big fat ones. Absolutely fabulous. Probably a bit like the crowds that were gathering round Jesus. And today we're in the maelstrom of the Passover crowd. I know we skip forward a little bit because um, we don't celebrate Palm Sunday to next week. But today Jesus is speaking to the crowds, the Passover crowds. And some outsiders appear. Does it look different? I don't know. We're simply told that they're Greeks. Well educated, respectful, but outsiders and Gentiles all the same. Outsiders and Gentiles was no place at the festival. And in the eyes of some, perhaps no reason to be there. Who they were, we don't know. Why they wanted to see Jesus, we don't know that either. What characteristics of our lives would allow people to pick us out from the crowd as people who belong to Jesus. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. <laughs> it's easy to imagine the disciples hearing these words and thinking, this is it. The kingdom's at hand, an earthly kingdom of power and authority. The people are calling for him. The Gentiles want to meet him. Is it really unfair to imagine that in the coming kingdom, 
the disciples also see themselves receiving their glory? What rewards do we expect to receive by following Jesus? Who would not be forgiven for believing that his glory was one of power and strength? However, the disciples dreaming of this coming wonderful earthly kingdom ends abruptly when Jesus starts to speak. For Jesus speaks not of life, not of power, but of loss and death. And this becomes an acid test of faith. Apart from the ultimate experience of our own personal physical death, what lesser deaths do we experience in our journey of faith? However, the issue here isn't actually about death, but it's about life. And this is the paradox. The way to life is through death. Life is dependent on change, letting go, loss. Jesus was really wanting to get through to his friends and his disciples and make sure they understood what was about to happen to him. People in Jesus' time, they often wondered who he was and why he was doing certain things. They didn't quite understand or believe that he was God's son. And they certainly didn't expect him to die and come back to life. Jesus tried to tell the questioners about himself and often uses parables or metaphor illustrations to do this, as we know. He knew, and we know, he was going to suffer and he was going to die. So he tried to describe that for his disciples and the others round about him, but they didn't quite understand it. So he tried to answer them in a way that would make it clearer to them when the time came which, as we all know now, is very, very, very soon. So Jesus does what Jesus does best and tries to give us a picture, prediction, of his upcoming death. So he uses, which he often did, a plant analogy. So he describes how a grain of wheat has to die, in a sense, in order to come back up out of the ground and grow and bring plants and food to many. And Jesus knew that he was like this wheat. He would have to die and give up his life in order to help others. Through his death, we have life. So basically he said, it's like this. Unless a grain of wheat goes into the ground and dies, it just stays as it is. But if it goes into the ground, it eventually grows and bears lots of fruit and gives off more seeds so that more new life can come. And then he said something else. If you want to follow me, you must go wherever I do and do whatever I do and leave everything else behind you. Sometimes it's going to be really, really hard, but if you do it, God will be so pleased. And then he started to pray. Father, I don't really understand this next bit. I don't understand. I'm really having trouble with what I have to go through. But I do know I have to do it. It has to be done to glorify your name. But he was struggling with it a bit. In this bit we see the human broken Jesus with the weight of everything that's going on starting to weigh down on him. When we hear Jesus praying to his father, the human broken Jesus, is this the Jesus we want to show? Who needs to see this Jesus? Who wants to see this Jesus? The world, that's who. The world, the church, the broken we all need to see it because that verse is the ultimate prayer of faith, hope and love. Dare we repeat it? And then, to the crowd's amazement, this voice, this booming, thundering voice came down. 
I have glorified my name and I will glorify it again. Everyone who was there, everyone that was standing around heard the voice. And they might have still been puzzling a bit about wondering who, what Jesus was talking about. But when they heard that thundering promise from heaven that God's name would be glorified, we know that the suffering, death and the resurrection of Christ brought that glory to God. Jesus knew that the people around about him would still not fully understand who he was but that God's voice had spoken aloud for their benefit. He knew his purpose and how powerful it would be for all the world. He came to drive out the darkness, the sin, death, the devil. To do that, he knew he would have to die. With this, Jesus affirmed who he was and solidified for his doubters his status as son of God. Son of God who would be glorified. On the cross, Jesus was literally lifted up for all to see. After his death and his resurrection, he was lifted up to heaven. All of us who look to him are lifted up by God. And if we can give up some of our things we think we need, which we don't really, we can go on to live with him forever. Pretty amazing stuff. Hi folks, I've came for just a wee quick banner before the sun goes down. And after filming with flowers and the seeds, look at here, see where all these trees have been cut down. And already there's new life starting to spring them up on them. And, and it won't be long before hopefully there'll be hundreds and hundreds of karates or bluebells here. The rest of this place will look familiar to you. As you know, I come here quite a lot. Isn't it just glorious? And look at all this. All that there. Because this was trees all the way along here. But now we see this beautiful view. But as you can see, new life is already starting to spring up. Seeds have been planted. The old's died and the new's coming, starting afresh. Fabulous. The reason Jesus is talking to the disciples about the little seeds, the grains of wheat dying, is so that they can become a plant. And it's because Jesus knows that he'll soon stop being the Jesus in the way that the disciples know him. He knows what's going to happen to him. And he wants his disciples to think about his life, his death and his resurrection in the same way that we would think about a seed turning into a beautiful plant. Just like this one. He wants them to know that his new life will be like a plant that keeps growing and has lots of new seeds. And he wants them to know that this is what they will be like. They are the seeds that will be part of this new life. Seeds that will share God's love and his healing, just like Jesus did. And isn't it great to think that we're all little seeds too? Yeah, you are. All of you are little seeds. Because every time you show somebody some kindness and some love, you're just plant planting one of the little seeds of Jesus. Because that's all he wants us to do. Spread his love by being kind, being joyful, looking after each other, and looking after yourself. Spreading Jesus' love is just like sowing lots of seeds so that you can grow too into awesome human beings. <laughs>